collar at that thing. When you, when you let go, okay, so that way it gets all the air out of your chest and it's pushing everything forward. All right. Yell at it. Markers ready. 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 That was better. Okay. For Bella Terenzi, getting expert advice and support is an important stepping stone for her budding athletic career. Bella and her teammates recently traveled from North Carolina to Fishersville, Virginia to compete in the Mid-Atlantic Wheelchair Games. Well, this is basically a wheelchair um, field events and track event um, where it's basically people who have disabilities like um, spina bifida or just any like, really any disability, it doesn't really matter, they can participate in these events. Um, because, I mean, everybody deserves a chance to be sports. Like, I don't feel anybody should be left out just because they're different from everybody else. Today, we are at the Mid-Atlantic Wheelchair Games, and they are competing um, in track and field. Today, they're doing the field events, and they're doing shot put, discus, and javelin. The sports that we provide um, are Paralympic sports. We are a Paralympic sports club. Um, we're Paralympic Sports Club Triangle, and there are Paralympic sports clubs all over the country. This is a stepping stone to if an athlete has Paralympic dreams, um, they can uh, start here and um, learn the basics of all the sports and then continue on and get um, uh, to more regional competitions and qualify to go to um, junior nationals. And then if they want to continue training, they can go um, and compete for the Paralympics eventually. Um, also, youth are, um, in North Carolina are allowed to compete on their high school uh, track and field teams and score points for their teams so they can also um, compete with the able-bodied track and field team. Bella is part of the Racing Rams, a team put together by Bridge to Sports, a nonprofit organization that provides opportunities for children and adults who are physically challenged to play team and individual sports. Located in the Triangle area of North Carolina, Bridge to Sports sponsors several teams of athletes that travel to various competitions. On this trip, the athletes were accompanied by coaches Fiona Allen and Mia Ives Rubley. Well, I've actually come to the Mid-Atlantic Games several times uh, to compete as an athlete. So I have uh, a lot of experience both on the uh, local, regional, and national level. And I have some experience internationally. So I just thought I would uh, try and show, especially since this is our kids' first time um, at a competitive event, just showing them um, how to get set up and how to get ready for a meet because, uh, you know, athletics isn't just about how much physically you can do, but it's a lot of mental um, training that you have to learn in order to become a better athlete and, and to compete at a level that um, the kids want to compete at. I think for, for people with disabilities and the disabled sports community, it's really, really important to give back to your community and to sort of teach what you've learned throughout your years. Um, so a bunch, of, a bunch of athletes tend to come back and uh, help out with any way they can to um, bring other athletes into the fold and, and get them training at a, better, a bigger level and uh, helping kids learn independence and self-confidence. Um, you know, I know in my experience, it, it was really important to, to be able to uh, learn for myself that I could be independent and that I could compete. And it helped me build the dreams that I wanted rather than being told all the time what I couldn't do. Um, so it, that's sort of what I want to help others learn about um, through disabled ath athletics. The Racing Rams are a young team, with all three athletes on this trip being first-time competitors. I'm doing field, I just finished field, and tomorrow we should be doing track. I just did a javelin, shot put, and discus. Tomorrow I should be doing the 60 meter and the 100 meter. This is my first time participating in like the track and field area. But I play uh, wheelchair basketball, played for two years. 
just I just want to go further with it, have more fun, uh, fun, maybe get pro. I love it because it keeps me fit. Uh, it's fun. Well, this is my first year competing, so this is actually fairly new to me, and I'm loving it already. So, yeah, this is also my first year competing. So it's her, it's her second year really doing it, but first year competing. So. This is actually the farthest we've traveled for events like this, but we also travel for like when we play basketball too. Yeah, and sometimes we travel like for basketball, we travel like locally, or sometimes we've gone to Alabama and stuff. So. And um, Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. I see myself just as a very independent woman being, um, like just going out there and trying so many new things. I can see myself definitely still in basketball, um, and I've lately gotten into fencing lately, so I may do that. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do as being now, so. But I see myself just being a very independent person. My family keeps saying I'm going to be a Paralympian. That's a pretty big goal for me. I can see it like that. Yeah, but I really, I really want to do a lot more to track but I also want to do basketball, so I'd really like to be both. I mean, we've actually done an ex um, a thing called a Paralympic experience where it's like these people um, come and they have, it's like different sports like hand cycling, um, basketball, sitting volleyball, fencing. It's just like a, an array of sports. Um, and it even includes like yoga and stuff. So it just really gives us the experience of like, wow, this is what we could do in the Olympic, like Paralympics. So it's it's a really great experience. Yeah. It's awesome. It's so much fun too. So I think that uh, the kids did great today. I mean, just thinking that this is their first real competition. I mean, I remember my first competition getting jittery and uh, not being able to focus and just seeing everything going on. And I think the kids did really well in focusing and, and trying to, to get, you know, get their start going because, you know, this is the beginning of a journey that they're going to be taking. And hopefully, you know, they've learned from this and hopefully they've taken out that they can do this and that it can be fun and understand why we practice um, in order to get to doing this kind of stuff, which is fun. Um, so I think they did really well. So Bridge to Sports creates opportunities for children and adults with physical challenges to participate in team, individual, and recreational activities. Um, we provide coaching, play space, and equipment through community partners um, to allow people with disabilities uh, to enjoy sports. There are 23 different adapted sports opportunities available in the Triangle, um, and we run 13 of those programs. The population that we serve lives in the Triangle area, North Carolina, Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. Um, but our, uh, our teams travel, we go to Tennessee, Virginia, we went down to Georgia for um, the regional competition for youth wheelchair basketball uh, this past March. Um, and so we mainly stay in the um, southeast. Bridge to Sports um, would like to keep providing more uh, sports opportunities for people with disabilities uh, in North Carolina. We um, work a lot with community partners and um, we have a, a hub model where we um, get groups together in the different areas and try to talk about how we can grow um, each type of sport and um, if we are not an expert in one area we try to find somebody who is and see how they can adapt um, their able body sport to, um, to an adapted sport. Um, a good example of this, in North Carolina we work with um, Triangle Volleyball Club and they, um, they provide sitting volleyball for us and so we don't run the program but they provide the adapted version of it. Um, and so we'd like to continue um, um, educating people that um, sports are easily adapted um, and that uh, you just have to be creative about how, um, so that you can include everybody um, in every type of um, activity. Sports are more than just um, playing the game and learning the rules of the sport. You learn so many things about um, sportsmanship, how to work as a team, um, the, the athletes build self-confidence and are able to um, become more independent and um, I think that that really helps them in other aspects of their life and that I think it's very important for everybody regardless of their abilities to uh, have the opportunity to play sports. It's it's a great organization. It's really great for anybody that's disabled. 
It's just wonderful. Well, I think anybody out there who's watching this and is disabled, or even if not, I do encourage them to get interested in um, athletics because it is a good way to build strength and endurance and stamina. And courage. And, yeah, courage. And you can meet a lot of new people and make plenty of friends. Like when Lizzie did basketball, that's how we I met. Was, we, I would not talk. I was so, yes, so shy. I, like, the, like, basically when she came in, um, I saw that she, she was like really shy and she just wanted to sit on the bleachers and watch, but I yeah. went over and I said hi, I introduced myself and encouraged her to You were like really happy. And I was just like, oh, okay, I really, really want and, to um, So I just encouraged her to play and she was like, okay, I guess I'll, I'll try for a little bit. And she played the whole night, we laughed, we talked, <laughs> and we just got to know each other. And ever since then, we have been like the best of friends. Mm -hmm. I think, um, a lot of people sort of don't realize that um, people with disabilities need um, certain activities in order to build um, their character and uh, their ability to be independent as adults. I think a lot of people are just shoving a lot of people with disabilities in the corner and saying, you know, you can't do this, so you might as well just sit back and watch while the other kids are, are competing. and doing Little League and doing theater and doing chorus and stuff like that. Um, being able to have this venue to let people, youth with disabilities, be able to gain self-confidence and um, the knowledge that they can do things and just building from there is, is really important. And this type of venue allows a lot of people with disabilities to communicate with each other. And it's sort of like a normalcy where, you know, not everybody's looking at your wheelchair now. Um, you know, there's so many people in wheelchairs that it just becomes normal. And uh, I think that's definitely helps with your self-confidence and, and not just focusing on your disability, but focusing on uh, what you can do and what you want to do.